scientists discovered a terrifying new parallel universe for the first time ever. Many might disagree, but there's a thin line between fact and fiction. One thing we can agree on is that fiction finds a lot of its inspiration from reality, and a lot of fiction could actually take place in reality. A popular saying that goes around is, who knows what could be out there? Earth-like worlds fit for life, indescribable galaxy that stretch to infinity, and most revered, the existence of unknown beings. But what if I told you this is just one of the many universes that could exist? We could be part of a multiverse, multiple universes that coexist. Universes where finding a perfect copy of you wouldn't be as ridiculous as this entire concept sounds. There has always been a quarrel between scientists that disagree and agree with this concept, but new studies and research have shown that very well could be a reality. Let's find out how. We've all come to know that the James Webb Telescope is designed to look into the distant past, searching the universe to find out what happened before the Big Bang, giving us new insight into the origins of the universe. After years of searching, everything we knew about the universe has changed. Let's go through some basic facts. Scientists think that the universe is about 14 billion years old. Everything that we see today is believed to have been created by the Big Bang. After the Big Bang, the universe kept getting bigger. Over time, stars and galaxies began to form. Our Sun is one of the countless billions of stars in our own Milky Way. Everyone knows that the Sun is the center of the solar system, and the solar system revolves around the Sun at an average distance of 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. This could just be one of the infinity universes out there. According to Stephen Hawking's theory from the 1960s, there are many universes and they're all separated by an infinite amount of space. Scientists have been looking for proof of other universes for a long time, and now they may have found it with the James Webb Telescope. The hypothesis is that the telescope could be able to see other universes using waves of matter. It is believed that other universes are expanding more rapidly than ours. This suggests that we live in a bubble universe where there are multiple Big Bangs taking place. According to lead researcher Ranga Ramchari from Texas A&M University, this indicates that there are other bubble universes out there. There are over 100 different types of universes, and ours could very well be one of them. The final theory on the origin of the universe, which Professor Stephen Hawking worked on together with Professor Thomas Hertog from KU Levin, was published in the Journal of High Energy Physics in 2018. The theory of the multiverse is related to a theory submitted for publication before the death of Stephen in 2018. This theory relies on string theory and suggests that the Big Bang universe is much simpler and finite than current theories about the Big Bang suggest. Professor Hertog, who has been awarded funding by the European Research Council, first discussed the new theory at a conference at the University of Cambridge in July 2017. This conference was held in celebration of Professor Hawkins' 75th birthday. Some recent theories regarding the Big Bang propose that our local universe emerged from a quick burst of inflation immediately after the Big Bang itself, which essentially means that the universe expanded rapidly immediately following the Big Bang. It is believed that there are regions of the universe where inflation never stops once it starts, and that quantum effects could keep inflation going forever in some regions of the universe. Therefore, globally, inflation is eternal. If inflation ended, and stars and galaxies formed in a pocket universe, then the part of the universe we can see would be a hospitable pocket universe. Professor Hawking said in an interview from 2017, the usual theory of eternal inflation predicts that globally our universe is like an infinite fractal with a mosaic of different pocket universes separated by an inflating ocean. The local laws of physics and chemistry can differ from one pocket universe to another, which together would form a multiverse but I have never been a fan of the multiverse. If the scale of different universes in the multiverse is large or infinite, the theory can't be tested. According to the paper, this account of eternal inflation is not a theory of the initial birth of the universe. Professor Hertog explains, the problem with the usual account of eternal inflation is that it assumes an existing background universe that evolves according to Einstein's theory of general relativity and treats the quantum effects as small fluctuations around this. However, the dynamics of eternal inflation wipes out the separation between classical and quantum physics. As a consequence, Einstein's theory breaks down in eternal inflation. 
Professor Hawking adds to it, saying, quote, We predict that our universe on the largest scales is reasonably smooth and globally finite, so it is not a fractal structure. Hawking and Hertog's theory of eternal inflation is based on string theory, which attempts to combine gravity, general relativity, and quantum physics by saying that the smallest parts of the universe are tiny strings that vibrate. The eternal inflation universe model is a hypothetical universe model that was developed as an extension of the Big Bang theory. The eternal inflation hypothesis suggests that the inflationary phase of the universe's expansion lasts forever throughout most of the universe. Because the regions are expanding quickly, the majority of the universe's volume is expanding at any given time. Because eternal inflation creates a multiverse that is seemingly infinite, only a small part of it is inflated. Their approach considers the idea that the universe is a large and complex hologram, which comes from string theory and physics, which says that the universe is like a massive hologram. This implies that certain three-dimensional spaces can be mathematically reduced to two-dimensional projections on a surface. Hawking and Hertog used a version of the idea of holography to project the time dimensions in eternal inflation. Holographic recording is a technique that allows a wavefront to be recorded and later reconstructed. Holography is most famous for creating three-dimensional images, but it is also used in many other ways. In theory, you could make a hologram of any type of wave. This allowed them to avoid the necessity of using Einstein's theory when describing eternal inflation. There is a new theory suggesting that eternal inflation is stopped at the beginning of time. Professor Hertog further explains, when we trace the evolution of our universe backwards in time, at some point we arrive at the threshold of eternal inflation, where our familiar notion of time ceases to have any meaning. Hawking's earlier no-boundary theory said that if you went back in time to the beginning of the universe, the universe would shrink and close off like a sphere. This new theory is different from their earlier work. Professor Hertog mentioned, now we're saying that there's a boundary in our past. They used their new theory to make more accurate predictions about the global structure of the universe and said that the universe that comes out of eternal inflation on the past boundary is finite and much simpler than the infinite fractal structure that the old theory of eternal inflation said it would be. Their new theory allows for more reliable predictions to be made about the global structure of the universe, and it was predicted that the universe that emerged from eternal inflation on the past boundary was finite and much simpler than the infinite fractal structure that the old theory of eternal inflation predicted. Their work would have profound implications for the multiverse hypothesis if the results are confirmed by further research. Professor Hawking revealed, We are not down to a single, unique universe, but our findings imply a significant reduction of the multiverse to a much smaller range of possible universes. This makes the theory more accurate and able to be tested. Our current space telescopes are capable of examining the implications of the new theory on smaller scales. He believes that primordial waves, ripples in space-time, which came out of eternal inflation, are the best chance so far to test the model. Since the beginning of our universe, these gravitational waves have undergone dramatic stretching, so they would now have wavelengths far longer than what the current LIGO detectors can observe. LIGO is a large-scale physics experiment and observatory that is designed to detect cosmic gravitational waves and to use gravitational waves as an astronomical tool. It's possible that the waves will be seen in future experiments measuring the cosmic microwave background or seen by the European Space-Based Gravitational Wave Observatory, LISA. In more recent times, scientists have been able to begin searching for evidence of the multiverse theory's existence. Recent images of the James Webb Telescope may have helped prove Stephen Hawking's theory correct. Scientists have found a strong signal from an infrared galaxy called MAX 1149-JD1. They think this signal may have come from a primordial gravitational wave. This would suggest that the signal originated from an event so far away or so long ago that light has not yet reached us. The universe might be similar to ours, but it is older. Although there are some who do not believe that there are an infinite number of universes out there, this one may be the first one we have found. Physicist Anthony Aguirre of the University of California Santa Cruz believes this could prove that there may be many pasts and futures of the world that exist at the same time. It would mean that everything is possible 
there could be an infinite number of planets with water and life, or no planets at all. The universe could contain an endless number of stars and galaxies, or no stars or galaxies at all. It's even possible that humans never existed. Many members of the scientific community may not agree with these findings, and until we have solid evidence to prove this, the theory will remain a theory. However, with time, Professor Hawking's final theory will have substance and proof. In the coming future, there will be many discoveries coming our way because the James Webb Telescope is on the job. So, what do you think? Is the multiverse theory real? Do these theories mean that there are multiple specific versions of this universe? And what else will the James Webb uncover in the coming years? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Age.